Kelly asked last week about doing a session on tension or gauge. And I thought I'd go through some pointers or, and some, um, um, some of the reasons for doing a tension square and, and do some tension squares so you can see what I've done and why I do them. So when you do a tension square, there are four things that are important for doing so. Um, one is the yarn that you choose to use. So the yarn will determine, um, or with the yarn, you'll determine all the other aspects. The second part are the needles. And if you have the right needle size for the yarn, then your work should turn out well. And when you buy yarn, generally, there is a recommendation on the label for needle size. So this is the Merino sock yarn and the recommended size is three millimeters. The Erin single is a five millimeter needle. Here I've got a label from Rowan Cash Cotton Cashmere. And not only do they have the recommended size, but they also have a recommended tension for that size needle and yarn. Um, and so has this alpaca yarn that I bought. It has a needle size and it has the gauge swatch. But that alone is not enough in determining whether you've got the right needles or the right yarn for the project. The other is the pattern. So if you're going to do um, a pattern with a three millimeter in this sock yarn, um, what you need to do is have the pattern stitched out as well. So here is a corner of a shawl that I've made with some lace work. And you can see that here I've used a three and a half millimeter needle, not a three millimeter needle as recommended by the pattern label, because on this one, I wanted the holiness and I wanted the lace to be able to see, be seen. So you can see how lacy it does look with a three and a half millimeter needle. So the pattern is, is also very important in determining the size of your needle with that yarn. The other, re, the other thing to consider is the purpose. So are you knitting um, a cushion cover, um, a jersey, a shawl, what are you knitting? And, and for each of them, the drape is important. So if, you need, if you're knitting a cushion cover, then it needs to have a fairly firm um, tension. You don't want it to end up stretching out of shape. If you're knitting a jersey, you want a medium drape. Um, you don't want it falling off your shoulders um, while wearing it. And the other thing is a shawl. And a shawl needs to be the loosest, softest drape that you can use with your yarn and your needles. Because that needs to sit comfortably around your neck and, and not feel as if you're wearing a neck brace. So it needs to be soft, cozy, and comfortable. Um, so, so for each of the yarn, the needles, the pattern, and the purpose, those four things will decide exactly what you're going to be using and what size needle you're going to be using. So here, as you've already seen by my label, I did a tension swatch in the Cowgirl Blues Merino Twist, and I used a three millimeter needle and it's 26 stitches makes up 10 centimeters and 37 rows make up 10 centimeters. What I do though is I knit my tension swatch larger than it needs to be because as you can see down the sides, my stitches are not necessarily even and at the beginning and at the end. And if we look at my beginning and my end, they're not exactly identical. 
So if I turn it this way, you can see. I cast off tighter than I cast on. So my tension swatch, instead of being a 10 centimeter square, I knitted it 14 by 12 and a half. So from that, I can find a middle section to give me a nice measurement of how many stitches across and how many rows top to bottom. And when I designed my shawl, I do like this drape, but because of the different patterns I was going to be doing with the shawl, I wanted it to be softer. So I then knitted my three and a half, and now all my labels are getting caught up in one another. I knitted a three and a half, um, a swatch in three and a half millimeter needles. And again, it's slightly bigger than the 10 centimeter and longer, slightly longer than the 10 centimeter. And, and I really liked how this felt. It gives a really nice soft drape. When I'm designing my own patterns, once I've knitted a, a tension swatch and I've decided which one I'm going for, I then block them. And having blocked them, you get the final appearance of your swatch. And so because of how these looked, I ended up choosing the three and a half millimeter needle for um, my pattern that I was doing. Because the pattern that I chose was also going to have some garter stitch in it, I also then knitted up a swatch in garter stitch. And this too has a really nice drape. I didn't do the swatch in the three millimeter because garter, garter stitch is denser than stocking stitch. And this for me was dense enough. So I didn't worry about going to a smaller needle. And here you've seen this a few times already. This is my cable that I've done with my rib in three and a half millimeters and my cable in four and a half millimeter needles. And I've been busy designing this jersey. So I knitted out a swatch with four and a half millimeter needles. And I want to show you the comparison. Can you see in the four and a half millimeter, at least in the four millimeter needle here, how you get a beautiful stitch definition? Here, it's looser. Even the rib, this rib was knitted in three and a half millimeter. And this rib was knitted in four and a half, four millimeter needle. And, and again, the stitch definition between half a millimeter for me is significant enough that I will choose a four millimeter needle. I also know that cable cardigans or jerseys do stretch a bit over time. So even though this is slightly denser than I would want it for now, over time, it's going to soften up and stretch a bit. So all the more reason to go for a four millimeter needle rather than the four and a half. Okay, and it's so interesting and, to see those two um, in the, uh, with the cable tension like that, because you can really see the, um, the, the difference in the drape and the stiffness of the cables and the definition. It's, yeah, just on half a millimeter, I would never have thought. Absolutely, absolutely. So if, if this one had been great, then I would have even tried out a five millimeter. Yeah. But this one being a four millimeter and already quite dense, I'm not going to try it on a three and a half millimeter. No. And I so, think some of what you're doing is with a view to designing, but it also helps yeah. to understand that that's some of the decision-making that goes into the development of the pattern in order to get the look that you want. So 
if you see a pattern picture with beautiful cables and think, oh, I want to knit that, if you don't get the tension right, your garment isn't going to have the same beautiful cables. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you're knitting a purchased pattern, um, always knit out your tension square exactly as the pattern requires. And if your tension isn't right, if your tension is too loose, then your tension square will be bigger than the recommended size. If your tension is too tight, it will be smaller than the recommended size. Mm -hmm. So if your tension square is too big, then you're going to go down a needle size. If your tension is too tight, you're going to go up a needle size. The only thing that you need to consider though is in changing your needle size, how does the stitch definition of the pattern change? If it changes significantly, so Kelly, you had a problem where your, your knitting ended up being too dense by going down a needle size to make the tension square fit, am I right? Yes, yes. Okay. So then the alternative to that is to stick to the needle size as the pattern requires, but knit a smaller size. Right. If in knitting a smaller size and your tension and everything still don't seem right, then you need to change your yarn. But one way of working out if you've knitted this in the right size needle and it's bigger than the pattern, do a measurement and work out the percentage that it's bigger. And then that is the percentage size smaller that you need to knit. So if you've got a tension square of 20 stitches to 10 centimeters, but you end up with 22, you probably only need to go down one size in the garment that you're wanting to knit. And that's one way of keeping your stitch definition correct. And the pattern will work and using the yarn you're wanting to work, wanting to use. So a friend of mine gave me a call over the weekend. She was wanting to knit something and it had to fit that tension square with the yarn that she was using. And, um, and she couldn't work out why the pattern wasn't looking right. And she was using a sock yarn with four and a half millimeter needles to get her tension square correct. But when she ended up knitting the pattern, there was no stitch definition whatsoever. So I said to her, she's either got to change her needles or she's got to change her yarn if she wants that stitch definition. Jane, in that example, yeah. if she changed her needles, she would get different, I mean, all things being equal, if all she did was change the needles, she would end up with a smaller tension square for the same number of stitches. So actually, it sounds like the yarn was the wrong yarn for the project. Absolutely, it was. It's the right tension on the right on the right when she got the tension square right. The stitch definition was bad. It was all too loose because the yarn was too skinny, and she needed a fat. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So I said to her, if she wants to knit that pattern, she's got to change her yarn. If she wants to use that yarn, she needs to find a different pattern. So um, that's those are the different ways of working with attention square, why attention square is important, um, and how you can work out what you are requiring for what you're knitting. So the other thing though is, if you, in knitting your tension square, your row, your stitches are the right number, but you end up being too small or too long in the number of rows, generally patterns not only give you the number of rows you need to knit, but the number of centimeters that you need to knit. So if your stitches are correct, then go according to the measurement, not the rows. 
And that's another way of getting your tension, at least of your getting your garment correct, because you knit the length, the required size. And it's also often a lot easier to add length into sleeves or body, whatever you're doing. It's much more complicated to get the width Right, so it's more important to Absolutely. get the number of stitches than it is to get the rows right. Yes, absolutely. And um, so it's something else that I thought of looking at. I think I've covered everything that I needed to for this. So what I also do, sorry, just one more thing here. What I also do is when I've knitted a tension square according to the pattern that I'm, I'm thinking of knitting, um, if, if it's a purchased pattern, I'll do my tension square and block it and see if I'm happy with how the final result is. You don't want to end up knitting the whole jersey or the or garment and at the end of the day, you don't like the way it, it drapes, you don't like the way it fits. And knitting something this size is so much quicker than knitting even half the garment before you've realized you've made a mistake. So something else um, to consider is your needles. So um, I'm both a yarn snob and a needle snob. And um, I have boxes of needles like this. Um, and I live in a little town where nearly everybody knows everybody. And when, it, when any of the dear old ladies pass away, the husbands or the family generally give me <laughs> the collection of knitting needles, <laughs> which is great when I teach, because then I take my knitting needles with me. And for people who don't have the right size, they can dig in the box and they can find a needle. Um, but these are aluminum needles. And I don't know if you found when you're knitting with these needles, if your hands sweat, then the yarn sticks to the needle. And it's a most uncomfortable experience. So um, generally in summer, people prefer not to knit because it's too hot and their hands are too sticky. So we'll do something else. So these are for students who don't have, and I don't use these anymore. I use a selection of wooden needles, wooden interchangeable needles. And not only are they incredibly comfortable to work with, they're also very pretty. They are interchangeable. So, sorry, was someone asking something? No, I don't think so. So, um, sorry, I, my tractor might be making a bit of a noise, actually. Um, and, and I find my hands don't sweat and the yarn doesn't stick to these needles when I knit. So I knit all year round without a problem. What I like about these as well is being interchangeable, they come with all sorts of different lengths of cables. So, what also happens is I've been casting on the rib for my cable jersey and I used one size cable to start off with, but then with so many stitches on my needle, it got bunched up and to change my cable was really easy because I could undo a needle, put a stopper on here, put my needle onto the cable I was going to use and just carry on knitting until I got to the end and swapped needles over. When I, when I finish the rib and I'm changing from my three and a half millimeter needles to my four millimeter needles, all I need to do again is pull my needle out, change, pull this one out and change and then carry on knitting. That's what I really like about these interchangeables as well. And something else that I enjoy knitting is lace work. And for my lace, I have these very fine, sharp needles. 
they are stainless steel and they also don't stick when I knit in summer and the yarn slips over them so smoothly. They are absolutely beautiful. When knitting lace, to have a sharp needle is absolutely fabulous for when you're doing your um, yarn over, you're knitting into the back of the needle, you can pick out that little stitch so easily with a sharp needle. And again, these are interchangeable and again with different lengths cables. These I've got in both four, mil, um, four inches and five inches and my four inch needles have a little attachment to make them into five inches. I like the five inch needle because I like to be able to hold it comfortably in my hand as I work. The four millimeter, at least the four inch needle, doesn't sit nicely in my hand. So consider your needles that you use. You want to make your knitting a pleasurable experience, not one that you get irritated by. And one way you can do that is through the choice of beautiful needles. And you'll never be sorry for having spent any amount of money. Well, there is a limit, um, but <laughs> spending, having spent a bit more on nice needles than the needles that you will pay, I think, 15 Rand for or something like that. Jane. Um, so consider it, yes. Um, where would you find these nice needles? Because I go to wool shops here and they only sell the, the cheapy stuff. Um, is it online or is there a specific place where you can recommend? So, Roxanne, um, you can go to Orion Wool and Craft if you want uh, knit pros. Those ones that I think Jane's got there look like them, the, the colored ones look like they might be knit pros. Yes, they are. Oh, where did you say, oh, Bridget? It's called Orion Wool and Craft. It's in Orion. Is it? Orion. Oh, okay. As in the star sign. As in the stars. The, yes. the stars. Okay, Orion and Orion. Is it? Okay, thanks. Yeah, so that's a good. Yeah. It, it's not open on a Monday or a Saturday. Oh. So don't. Don't go there then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, Mama's woolly, woolly's uh, had haberdashery here in in, uh, in Weinberg. No, it's just those gray, gray ones which hurt your fingers. Yeah. That's yes. what I find. That it's like the pushing. It's like, ugh, especially the thin ones. It's horrible. Yeah. And um, Jane, so are, Jane, are those uh, the metal ones chagu or are they? Um, no, they're higher highers. Uh, okay. These are higher fires. Uh, have, the, uh, have you Sorry. used the Have you used the chagu? No, I haven't. The Japanese ones, because oh, they're also oh. nice. They're also unscrewed. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So what I did was before buying needles, I looked at the reviews online on different needles. And I. So these interchangeable needles um, are all imported. The knit pros actually come from India, um, but yes. they are more expensive. And if you're thinking about going in the direction of one brand, it's a good idea to perhaps just get one set, one pair to start with and try them out and see if you like them. And then to, Absolutely. Then to keep going with yeah. them set because there are a couple of different ones yes. there are the knit pros the high highs the chagus um yeah there are a couple of different brands that that people like and recommend okay um i was lucky enough that my husband one year for christmas bought me this set and and i've since added to it but um i very seldom knit actually i don't think i've ever used the eight millimeter or the seven um, and I don't know that I've even used the six and a half. So don't go out and see a beautiful set and say, oh, I want that set. They're expensive and there will be needles that you never ever use. And, and careful, Jane, I'm busy knitting with the sevens and eights at the moment. Yeah, you can, <laughs> oh, are you? I knit them for me. I knit with big ones. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so, so, so then like your this. end would probably be this end, not no, this. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't discriminate. I like them all. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, um, I, I don't think I've ever used these big needles. And, and I have so many projects on the go at once that I've got more than one of the different sizes. So that's why they doubled up inside the elastic. Because there was only one, 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 and I've added. Yeah, I, I do find the the very small, the very fine knit pro wooden ones are inclined to break sometimes. The the if you're using a small size needle. Um. Yes, they would the wooden ones. So yeah. these are three millimeter needles, and what I've had happen is they break at this join. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I have an engineer son, and what oh, he's okay. done is he's taken it apart, drilled inside both sides, put in a piece of metal inside here, and glued it together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I am one of the fortunate few that have been able to do that. Um, the alternative is um, to get metal needles in those small sizes. Yeah. So that makes quite a difference. Knit Pro also have um, metal needles. They're not interchangeable, um, but they're also in the smaller sizes. So here is a two millimeter, two and a quarter millimeter, and they're metal. So those are also really nice for doing fine work. So something else I wanted to show you is working with interchangeables, often you might find that your cable does not want to stay open when you work. It curls up and creates quite a problem. The way to sort that out is you boil your kettle and take the lid off so that the kettle doesn't automatically switch off. And as the kettle is boiling, you hold one end and slowly pull the cable straight over the steam. And once you've gone right to the other end, your cable stays without being twisted. So just a simple tip there. And I know these ones are the worst for staying, for coming, coming straight. So these might need um, a second pull over the steam to straighten up because it doesn't matter what you do, they twist up until you've steamed them. And I just give it a nice firm pull over the steam. Um, just be careful you don't burn your fingers on the steam. But just pull it straight. And as you're pulling, keep holding on to it. And when you're done, you'll have straight needles, at least a straight cable. Okay. Are there any questions? Jane, in that cable um, swatch you were knitting, what, how did you knit the rib? Because I saw it was twisted or, yeah, that rib. In this one. Okay, so here yeah. I was playing with two different ribs. This one is um, four stitches making up a, a cable where it was a 2-2 two, two cable. Yeah. And this one is also a cable, but it's only two stitches. So I cross over one stitch. Oh, okay. And to do this, I don't even need a cable needle. And it's what I'm doing here. So I can show you here. Do you do it on every row? Um, only on the right side um, row. Oh, so okay. here, I'm ready to do my twist. I just need to make sure my hands are in the center of the camera. And to make the twist to the left, as I've been doing in this, I knit into the back of the second stitch on my needle. And I don't take it off the needle. I then knit into the front of the first stitch 
and then I take them both off. And that oh, okay. twist then. Yeah. If okay. I wanted the twist to go to the right, then I would knit into the front of the second stitch and then knit into the next stitch and then pull them off. And that makes a twist to the right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No, all good. no more questions. Silence. Uh, do I have a question? Oh, Kelly says Knit Pro will replace any broken needles. That's interesting. Really? Um, we get the, here we get them from Arthur Bales, who I think oh. they're the importer, and and they will replace any. And when I tried to do it directly with Knit Pro, they said go to your local agent, okay. and, and they have replaced for me. But I also okay. heard that they're not going to be bringing any more in, so I don't know. That will be disastrous. <laughs> yeah, that will be. Are they switching to a different brand? I'm not sure. I, I can't even remember who I heard, uh, who I heard mention that. Um, I'm just asked next time I go in there, but uh, I'm trying not to go into wool shops because <laughs> I mustn't. <laughs> You have a large enough stash. <laughs> Sorry? We could phone. I'll put it on my to-do list. Well, I could do. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I complained to Roger at Iran that the knit pro had broken, and he didn't offer to replace it. No, no I never offered to replace mine either. <laughs> <laughs> well, send them to me. I'll get my son to fix them for you. <laughs> I think I, I think I threw them away. Oh no! I think I've got a little jar uh, of broken needles. <laughs> are they wooden ones? Uh, no, I think I, I think I've got the Knit Pro one somewhere in a drawer. I, I'll look them out. Okay. Well, next time you send me yarn, you can send me the needles, and I'll get them fixed for you. Yeah. <laughs> my, my son is very obliging. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions? Is that it? How are you is that today? A main thing on gauge, Jen? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so there we are. So I thought I'd show you my shawl that I've just finished knitting. Very exciting. Um, do you want to switch to the other camera? Oh wow! That looks lovely. Exactly. And can you, you see the drape of it? How it hangs so beautifully, and that's the three and a half millimeter needle that created that. And um, so this is going to be. This is going to be a pattern that um, Bridget and I are going to be putting out using Bridget's yarn and my pattern. And I'm trying to get this on so you can see. And that's how it sits. And the good news about this pattern is that we're going to do it as a knit along. Um, so that you can choose your yarn and order that. And then I think we're planning to start at the beginning of November um, oh, and uh, yeah, work okay. through each in, uh, uh, we'll probably do it, I think, on our Wednesday mornings. We might do the, the kickoff one on a Saturday um, so that uh, so you can knit it along and get started with how to do it as you go along. Yay! Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I can, okay, so I've started my, my scarf for with my shawl. Look at how my, how my lovely rib is coming along. Okay, hang on one sec, hang on one sec. Um, 
Okay, where are you, Roxanne? Sorry, I'm going to just um, pop right to you. Okay, show, show, show. So it is my website. I'm doing both sides. I'm stopped because I only have limited purple. So I thought I'll start both sides and I'll knit towards towards each other. But then I can do the same a mosaic thing again. So I've finished my rib now. Okay. And okay. look, at, look at my, my slipped off stitches. Yes. Ah, look at that. How neat it is. Yes. <laughs> Very well done. I just had to make sure that the, that the yarn goes to the right way. So it, it makes yes. it nice. Yeah, so I'm, I'm getting there. So, and I just fixed a row, actually. I was there because oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was supposed to purl instead of yarn. So I just, I, instead of knit, I mean. So I'm like knitting and I'm like, oh, shucks, I need to purl this. So I actually took it out, <laughs> put it back on. Now this yarn is very forgiving because it's so stiff. So it's, it's okay. So anyway, to be continued next week, hopefully there will be more. But I'm, I'm going to do the, so the mosaic, okay. so I'm going to match it with this. So I'm going to have a couple of rows of the black now. And then I'll put the yeah. mosaic in. Yeah, on both, both sides. <laughs> and we'll go from there. Yeah. So, and then the back looks like this. Actually quite nice as well. Oh, it is. Yes. Yeah. So it is. Size, yes. So, well, done. Well, I actually remembered what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. Well done. Yeah. Now I'm getting there. And lovely with my whatever this seven size 11 American needle. What is it? Eight millimeter needle, Jane. Eight millimeter. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> well done <laughs> uh, maybe someday i'll i'll actually be um be uh, uh, brave enough to go for the smally stuff uh, but I, i'm just i'm like i like my big yarns I'm just happily going along uh, fantastic yeah but you gave me a good idea for my birthday it's my birthday on friday so um so i think i'm going to tell my friends to buy me new needles uh, if they oh, want to buy me a present, they can get me new needles from Orion in uh, in Orion, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lovely. Oh, nice. I think that's a perfect gift. Because I hate yeah. getting soap and stuff, which you don't do, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. It feels like, don't I smell good? <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they buy you this. Uh, they buy you like a a, a, a a smell flavor kind of that's just not you. So then you're sort of stuck yes. with it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Bridget, I was wondering because obviously with the corona there can't be an actual sale this year. Or are you still thinking of doing one later in the year? Or what's your thoughts on that? Um, Roxanne, like, I'm, I'm not too sure yet. Um. But we, so because of the coronavirus, I've actually been at home in isolation um, and uh, I haven't been into the studio this week or last week, but uh, we will have a look and see. Part of it is, is an issue of whether we've got st enough stock to sell and to justify a sale. So I'll go through with Almery in the next couple of weeks and see where we are um, with seconds and things like that and what we've got that we would be able to do uh, otherwise we'll just do it in sort of small little things like we did with the dk 50 gram balls when we wanted to sell off the rest of those so yeah, yeah just keep an eye on the newsletter and um it, it, and I'll let it's it. also mostly for the other vendors you know because it was very nice to see those other the fabric people and uh the shoes and the clothes and the I know. The, the, those ones i'm actually like your yarn is fine i have enough but it's the other ones <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what i must do then is actually just talk to some of my friends who, who are in businesses and we do it sort of together via email that we um or like a virtual market thingy or i don't know yeah yeah it's it's difficult to coordinate um, multiple businesses in a virtual mm, thing, but, yeah. um, but I, I've got I've got a little group of business ladies who are all, were all part of that sale that we get together for dinner every now and then, and we haven't for six months, but we're having dinner next week. So I'll chat to them then and see see what people are thinking. Yeah, it's was always nice to get I uh, get some fabric and yeah. whatever, just have a look around. So Other yeah, ideas and things. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. or okay. maybe if there's another venue which is a bit bigger that you can uh, and then you keep uh, that there's not more than 50 people at a time inside which you, really you know and that there's enough space yeah. yeah yeah that's yeah okay thanks okay yeah. that's, Um, good. So Jane, I've also got a swatch, I just have to go and fetch it, I've got a swatch to show you of the two colour rib as well. Um, okay. Hi Gail, I didn't see you come in earlier. Hey Jane, how are you doing? <laughs> good, thanks, and you? That scarf is beautiful, it's gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We'll be putting the pattern out um, next month and with some yarn choices and starting in November with the teaching of it a week at a time, doing a section at a time. That sounds um, manageable. <laughs> yes, it should be. It should be. I've tried keeping it so that the, each section is not too long um, or too difficult. It sounds exciting. Um, I got uh, the, the one um, lady was mentioning that she was going, she, her birthday's coming up on Friday. Um, the one lady. Yes. <laughs> and that you're going to get money for your birthday. I, I, um, I hadn't seen friends for quite a while. We met up for Father's Day. Father's Day, he was here on Sunday. And oh, they gave me a a gift voucher for knitting because Dave told them I was interested in knitting and so they gave me $40 <laughs> to spend at the knitting shop so yeah, oh. Oh, that's the thing yeah that's now I know the needles I need to get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's gonna be lovely to go and browse and decide what you want to buy yes Yes, I'm quite excited. <laughs> yes. More now than I was when I got the voucher. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've, what I've done is there's some other needles that I'm wanting to try. And um, I've ordered them. They, um, it's in England. And I've ordered them and had them posted to my son in London. And when he eventually is able to come home, he'll bring me my needles. So I've got a few different sets that I've, I've bought. So we'll what, see. What sort, Jay? What sort of needle? One of, I mean, what one maple? Of them, one of them is Prim. Oh, I P-R-Y-M. P-R-Y-M-M. -M -M. Yes. So I've used some of the Prim needles. Um, I know them from uh, from H and H, the trade show in Germany that I go to. Yes. And yeah. I, uh, um, I've used a couple of pairs of theirs, not the, uh, I don't know if they've got interchangeables, I haven't tried those, um, but but I like them and they, they seemed like a good, reputable company. Um, the other yes. one that I've tried, if you use lace needles, if you want small ones, is um, Addy. Yes. Yeah, which I also like. Um, and um, there's another make... Um, I know Be Inspired has a whole lot of different um, needles on her website. Yeah. yeah. Is it um, the Lyka? L Y K K E, Lyka. Yes, yes, yes. That's, That's the other I've one I was thinking. Those. I've got those, and they're absolutely beautiful. And the cables yes. work with the Knit Pro as well. So oh, some of them, okay. I think, Chiagu, you can't. Uh, use the same cables and connectors we just yes this is my Leica set oh lovely they are beautiful absolutely gorgeous i love them hello the other thing is um, <laughs> Sorry, don't worry i just <laughs> you meet your mum. <laughs> the other thing that with the wooden needles is you can take them on an airplane. Yeah. That's cool. Yes. And and I found scissors, ceramic scissors <laughs> that you can take as well. I always have my foldable scissors and they make two circles. 
and you yes. pull them out. They've never stopped me ever. And they're like, when, oh, you, really? when you make a scissor out of it, you can seriously kill somebody, but they don't pick it up as a scissors because it looks like two circles and stripes okay. in the middle. It's amazing. Yeah. So what do you think about bamboo, actually? Because I, I have bamboo and I thought it was nice, but it's horrific because all my yarn the, always sticks to it. The bamboo splinters. Yeah, okay. And it's also, it just sticks. It just doesn't slide off easily. It's yeah, you find it as well. Yeah, okay, yes. so it's not my knitting. It's actually the bamboo. Okay. Because yes. I always yeah. thought it was me, but okay. <laughs> but like these ones, <laughs> I bought these long time ago in the States when we were on tour and we were sitting in the bus for like um, eight hours a day sometimes. So I thought, let me p pick up knitting needles and get some yarn. And, um, but, and they, they, they actually so nice. They slide off, they, they work so nicely. So, and uh, at the Walmart, <laughs> probably for $2 <laughs> or something. But um, yeah, and it really makes a difference what you use. Yeah. It does, it does make a difference. I, I went, yeah. um, I've actually seen it lying here. Like when I, when I found this one, um, the, do you see the La Tulip? Yes. Uh, the, the crochet oh, hook. The crochet. Yes. This has changed my life. The woman who sold this to me, is, it's going to change your life. I'm like, what? Well, it's just a crochet hook. But <laughs> it has changed my life. It is so light and so nice. It just, it just, this content, like compared to anything else, it is such a good, and it's a little bit, as you say, it's a little bit more money, but it's such a pleasure to work with. So yes. I actually want to find more of these. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and my, um, my, what did I call them? My metal needles. I've gone blank as to what their name is right now. Are they and my higher, 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 that's it. I found them on eBay mm. and um, incredibly reasonably priced on eBay. But those I also had sent to my son and when I saw him in December, I got them from him then. Mm. Um, so Jane, the other needles that I've got is the Knit Pros also have um, uh, some carbon, they're called carbons. Yes, yes. Those are very nice. Um, I got, I just happened to get this pair um, for, uh, I, I bought them when I was at trade show and yeah. they're also a nice option for some of the smaller sizes because they don't break as easily as the, um, absolutely as the wooden ones. And they're really, so those are really nice. So they and they're change. also interchangeable. Yes. Yeah. And they're, they're yeah. Cool, so they fit on all the things. And then here's okay. my swatch. Oh, color rib. But I okay. Let's just talk with the two different yarns, um, the fluffy yes. and the DK, and actually this I knitted on an eight millimeter needle. Um, oh really? Yeah, yeah, so it's quite nice to to play yes. with some of the bigger, the bigger needle sizes, especially with the yarn like this, I and mean, you can see on the back, I um, also quite like the, the back, yes. uh, the wrong side of it. So, but, um, did you use it as a double thread? Uh, no, I just used one thread, one strand of each uh, in okay. the color rib. Um, and it, I wanted it to have quite a lot of, um, okay. of, of dread, not to be too stiff. Yes. Obviously, to yes. make it stiffer, I could have gone down a couple of needle sizes and it would have given yeah. it a firmer texture. No. Yes, no, that's lovely. Yeah, so it's quite nice to see. What you can, what you can play with. Yeah, yeah, I fixed it. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Uh, this is another piece that I'm working on yeah. at the moment. So yeah. this is in the DK, and um, it's uh, I have this very beautiful Japanese knit stitch Bible. I'll show you. Um, um, since we're talking about gauge, uh, so you can oh, see yes, stunning pictures. And I was experimenting with this one over here. Yes. And for my first experiment, I was doing it with a with a variegated yarn. Let me just hold it that way. But there, you can really see the gauge that this was a much bigger needle size, and then I switched to a smaller needle size over here. 
and the stitching yeah. is so different on the two different, mm. two different yeah. Same. and so this was um so from that pattern i was i was playing with this idea of stitching and then actually i just i just carried on getting bigger and bigger and bigger in my triangle instead of doing the little <laughs> As the beginning of a um, of a shawl, yeah, of a shawl. Lovely. Hmm. Yeah, that's lovely, and has a nice drape too. Yes, it does. Yes. And so I'm going to put some of the fluffy mohair in with it as well, and I think I'm going to keep going up on a needle size because, um, uh, yeah, I've been uh, while we've been here this morning. I've been uh, this was oh. on a five, and you can see yeah. on the back over there on the 5.5 but for this yeah. um, for this shawl piece over here i'm actually going to go on to a bigger needle than the 5.5 because i want to just knit the fluffy mohair but to have that same loose knit effect um by and yeah. it with a bigger needle than than rather than with the the slightly more complicated stitch pattern for the second part yeah knitting just a knit and pull yeah. you'll get a yeah. beautiful lacy effect without actually doing any fancy stitches exactly just by using a bigger needle yes yeah 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 lovely mm -hmm. have and we got any other questions showed us her cowl earlier. I don't sorry know. susan showed us her cowl earlier and um, kelly and oh, okay. Anna, you didn't see that but i don't know if she'll show it to us again Oh wow, it's finished. Yeah, you were busy with it last week, I think, as well. The gable yeah. cow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Beautiful. I love that color. I absolutely and love purple. I've never knitted cables before. How impressive is that? They much so beautiful. It's so even. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And the twisted rib. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Very yeah. impressive. Lovely. Thanks, Jane, for another really interesting session and a great discussion. And thank you also to all of you for bringing your questions and your samples to show us what you've been up to. Look forward to seeing you again next week.